I just spent three weeks hands-on with the world's most customizable gaming mouse. This is a SwiftPoint Z2. And to be honest, this is the most unique and innovative mouse I've ever seen. But what makes this mouse so unique and innovative? Well, we're gonna find out. I'm Michael Scott, and this is the Ultimate Tech Hub. And to be clear, the Z2 is not a perfect gaming mouse, and I found a few flaws that we'll discuss later in the video. And this video is broken down into chapters, so you can easily skip the different parts of the video. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the specs of the Z2, including the technology that's inside the mouse. We'll explore all the button configurations. We'll also take a look at the SwiftPoint X1 control panel and all the features. We'll test some different customizations using the predefined profiles. And then we're gonna talk about what we like about the mouse, what we love about the mouse, and the few minor flaws we found during the testing process. The SwiftPoint Z2 is a Kickstarter and is currently priced at $199. Links are below. So first, let's go over the specs and the technology inside the Z2. The Z2 is a large right-handed mouse with dimensions of 5.12 by 3.54 by 1.57 inches. So it's ideal for big hands. And that's great for me because I have big hands. So what exactly do you get with the Z2? Well, you get the mouse, two sets of customizable feet, two sets of replacement buttons, the magnetic joystick pad, and the user manual. The Z2 sports a tethered design and includes two drag minimizing side rests, one that cups your thumb and another on the right that cradles your ring and or pinky finger. The Z2 weighs 4.125 ounces or 117 grams, and this does not include the cable. But considering the size of this mouse, it's actually pretty light. However, it's far too heavy for competitive gaming which means the Z2 is a gaming and productivity mouse and not a pro gaming mouse. It's just far too heavy. Now, to be fair, there is a ton of technology inside this mouse, so the added weight is due to that fact. That being said, this mouse is really designed for MMO gamers and productivity tasks like video editing, graphic design, AutoCAD, and other work-related tasks. The Z2 sports a high back that's tallest on the left then tapers to the right so that you get the most support beneath the heel of your hand. And you'll also find the RGB light here as well. And if you're a big fan of RGB lighting, well, this is all you're gonna get for this mouse. So you might be a bit disappointed. <laughs> However, you will not be disappointed with the buttons. The button configuration is the most unique I've ever seen in a gaming mouse. It's also packed with extra technology, including five pressure sensors, haptic feedback, and a gyroscope. And even the switches levers and buttons can be removed or swished out to suit your needs. The Z2 includes 13 programmable buttons with a total of 13 customizable settings, OMROM mechanical switches, onboard memory, a customizable digital side LCD screen, a plethora of pre-made gaming profiles, a small splash of RGB, and it includes the Pixart PAW3395 26K sensor, which gets 650 plus IPS across 50 to 26,000 DPI range and a 1000 Hertz polling rate. This is truly one of the best sensors in the gaming mouse market today. And as if all these options aren't impressive enough, the Z2 can convert into a joystick controller. It comes with a magnetic extender that attaches to the bottom of the unit. This extender elevates the mouse from your tabletop so that you can use it like a joystick. And the built-in gyroscope works to register your movements in this mode. So now let's take a look at the button configurations. We have the left click, right click. We have the scroll wheel with middle click and scroll up and down. Right above the left click and right click, we have two additional buttons. By default, the left is cut and copy and the right is paste. And we have two additional buttons above those buttons. And to the left of the left click button are two additional buttons. And right above the thumb pad, you'll find two additional buttons. And that gives us a total of 13 buttons. And in addition, the left click and the right click and the two buttons above them can be customized to be used with deep click settings. So you can assign multiple actions per button with configurable actuation points and vibration feedback. The main benefit of the deep click feature is to have the ability to assign multiple functions to one button. For instance, if you're in a shooting game, like Call of Duty, and you want to zoom in on a target, you can assign that zoom in 
to a deep click force of say 50%. And then once you're zoomed in, you can fire with the same button. And you can assign multiple deep clicks to one button with different features. Very cool. And the Z2 has four buttons that allow this. The Z2 allows you to program vibration control to feel your clicks. And this is a feature I have not seen in any other gaming mouse. And in addition, the Z2 has swappable feet, which includes interchangeable lockout and tilt enabled feet. And you can even map your actions to left or right using tilt gestures. And this is the main benefit of the gyroscope. At the front left of the mouse is the LCD screen. And this screen is fully customizable. And at the back right of the mouse, you'll find three comfort pads. And it also includes a comfort thumb pad as well. Okay guys and gals, let's take a look at the SwiftPoint X1 control panel. And by default, this is set to simple mode. However, at the bottom left, there's an expert mode, but I would avoid that mode until you get used to simple mode first. At the top left is the active profile, manual or auto. And we have it set to auto. And what this means is, the X1 software will automatically detect whatever program you're currently using, and it will use the predefined profile. At the bottom left, if you click on the mouse, it has several options, which also includes the mouse memory usage. Below that is the version, and below that is the X1 settings. With all 13 buttons, you get a comprehensive action library, and there are so many options, it's almost overwhelming. But to make it much easier, click on the Manage Predefined Profiles button, and then just add the appropriate profiles, and you can add up to 20. This will save you time and frustration. And you can also create multiple profile names by going to the plus button. And one thing I have to say is SwiftPoint did a great job on this software. The X1 control panel is very intuitive and easy to use. So now it's time to test the mouse using some predefined profiles. And as you can see, I've already added 12 profiles. First up is CSGO. The Z2's predefined button configurations are pretty amazing. Although I'm still terrible at CSGO. <laughs> but having six buttons at your fingertips allows for fast reload times and switching of weapons. Next up is Star Wars The Old Republic, one of my favorites. And once again, the controller is amazing. All six main controls are right at your fingertips. And that doesn't even include the scroll wheel. And next up, we have Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And it definitely feels like the Z2 is made for Call of Duty. With an insane amount of customizable options, you can customize your movements, weapons and equipment, vehicles, and the list can go on and on. And don't forget about the haptic feedback. This feature makes you feel like you're really in the game. Very cool. And one thing to note, you're gonna have to adjust your DPI after every game because it automatically defaults to 1500 every time. Up next is World of Warcraft. And once again, the preset button configurations are awesome. And you still have the ability to change the button configurations to whatever you want. So you can change your spellbook or world map button to whatever you want. So now we'll check out a flight simulator. This is an F-18E Super Hornet. And converting the Z2 to a joystick is pretty amazing. And the gyroscope does work well. However, I found the joystick not to be high enough. So when you move left to right, it's kind of limited. However, the joystick feature is not something I would use very often. But it does work well for this flight simulator. And I have to say the vibration feedback is pretty amazing. It's kind of like having a PS5 controller in the palm of your hand. So now let's talk about what I like about the mouse, what I love about the mouse, and the few flaws that I found. First of all, what I like about the mouse is the build quality. It feels solid and well-built and not cheaply made. And also the attention to detail is amazing. For instance, the comfort pads on the left and the back right of the mouse, while it's not a huge deal, is still a nice touch. And if you have large hands, then the size of this mouse is perfect. I can rest the palm of my hand on the back of the mouse easily. And it stays comfortable for hours of video editing. So now, what do I love about this mouse? Well first, the switches, levers, and buttons feel great. They don't feel cheap. And because these are Omron mechanical switches, there is virtually no risk of the dreaded accidental double click. And to top it off, these switches are reliable. When it comes to gameplay, the Z2 is highly responsive and very accurate. And for a heavier mouse, it even feels comfortable after long hours. And speaking of switches and buttons, the top buttons on the mouse can be switched out for different sized buttons. Pretty cool. And after I switched out the larger buttons for the smaller buttons, the Z2 felt even better. I also love the LCD screen. 
it's a nice touch. And I do appreciate the customizable feet and the joystick pad. I feel like the best use for the joystick mode on this mouse is a flight simulator. And the last thing I love about this mouse are the automatic user profiles. It makes switching from one program to another very easy. And this saves you so much time from programming each individual button. So what about the things that I don't like about the Z2 and the flaws? Well, the first thing you'll notice when using this mouse is that when you hit left and right click, you'll tend to hit the buttons above it on accident. I found myself constantly cutting and pasting on accident because these buttons by default are cut, copy, and paste. And the best way to use this mouse to avoid this mistake is the claw position. You don't want to rest your fingers all the way down on the mouse, just the fingertips. By doing this, you'll avoid pressing the top buttons. So it took about a half an hour to get used to this, but now it's no big deal. It's automatic. However, some of you might find this to be annoying, so just a heads up. And the scroll wheel, it does feel kind of cheap compared to the other buttons, levers, and switches. If you're going to offer really nice buttons, levers, and switches, then the scroll wheel should match that as well. Just saying. And one thing about the software that's rather annoying, I set my DPI to 1750, but when I switch to a different profile, it defaults back to 1500 DPI. I really wish my custom DPI would remain the same using all profiles. And a few other minor issues with the Z2 is that I wish there was a wireless version, and I wish they would have included a carrying case. For $199, you want to protect your investment. And the last small complaint about the Z2 is the lack of RGB. There is one small RGB logo, but for the most part, it's covered by your hand the whole time. It would have been nice to have some additional RGB at the front of the mouse. So the question is, should you buy the Swift Point Z2? The Swift Point Z2 doesn't come cheap. It's listed for $199 on the Swift Point's website. I say it's listed because it's sold out at the time of posting this review. Yes, it's that popular. Remember, this is a Kickstarter program and Swift Point is based out of New Zealand. So is the Z2 worth the price? Yes, absolutely. I've only scratched the surface of what you can do with this mouse, but take my word for it, it offers endless possibilities for your gaming, especially in MMOs. And all of the Swift Point Z2 information is listed below. If you're tempted to buy the Z2 and can find one available, you absolutely should pick one up. It's hands down the best mouse I've ever used, even with the minor flaws. And with that guys, I'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.